Chronic pain, a complex disease that can be described as an ongoing or recurrent pain that does not go away after three months. While there are many different forms and causes of chronic pain, each patient's condition is unique, making diagnosis and treatment challenging for physicians and healthcare professionals. The following individuals, although diverse in their medical conditions and pain states, are united in their willingness to share their experiences, hoping to raise awareness of the complex emotional and physical tolls that accompany living a life in pain. Through the years, my job has always been working with my hands. I went to high school and then the army and then became a plumber and at work I was working in a confined space too long and I went to stand up and I couldn't stand up straight and ended up going to the doctor after and they found out it was a herniated disc. So from there I had a one back surgery where they took part of the disc out and uh, I was good for a year. I went back to work and sitting on my toolbox I went to get up my leg gave out. Went back to the doctor and they said a disc fragment broke off, you need <clears throat> another surgery. They said we have to do a fusion and they put the rods and screws in. They took uh, some more x-rays like six months, eight months, and then a year that the fusion didn't take. Um, your screws are moving in your vertebrae. I think it was 2001 was the last surgery. I woke up with a brace around my waist. I said, what's that for? And they said, well, that's temporary. We want to make sure that it, it's going to have time to fuse. I still wear the brace to this day. I never got back to work after that because I didn't recover. So I wear a $2,000 brace to be able to stand or sit. I um, was involved in a car accident. Uh, initially, I was, I'm a nurse and I worked at UNE. I fractured C4, 5, and 6. I was six months in, in the hospital. The OT and PT and nursing uh, were right there, you know, to help me all the way through. The worst part, actually, is that um, I can't feel for my breast down. And I, I have some movement of this arm and hand. Th this one, I very, very limited, and this is where most of my pain is, especially when I have spasms. And uh, I've had it since my accident. years with the SEAL teams were um, a training like no other. Pain was um, something we learned to deal with. It doesn't matter how painful it gets. The injuries stacked up on one another comes to the territory. It's just, uh, they're just injuries. And I, I dismissed them. Both my shoulders, my base of my spine is fractured. I've got five herniated discs. I've been uh, opened up uh, surgically about five or six times in the abdomen. My right and left Achilles have been severed. Everything is, is all banged up and, and destroyed. This part's okay. And then PTSD sits. The PTSD has an association with this chronic pain like uh, I never realized before. I would never would give it to someone. But if you could give it to someone and take it back, I think the person would be like, changed forever and they would have a perspective on on the disease or whatever it is uh, that uh, like never before like no medical journal could give them each chronic pain patient requires a treatment plan that is specialized to their own specific needs one that focuses on reaching the person's individual goals and improving their overall function and quality of life sometimes relieving the physical pain is not enough the specialized care plan must address both the physiological and psychological components associated with chronic pain. By listening to a patient, a healthcare provider can create an environment that facilitates a healthy partnership, encouraging patients to become proactive in their own care. The first doctor I was with, I knew right away that um, he was just going to hand me the prescriptions. And I said, is there another avenue for me, another way to go? It was not giving me the incentive to want to help myself because I just felt like an example or a, a study or just somebody that they don't know anything about, you know? And I wanted to be known. I, I, I wanted someone who knew what they were doing and knew what they were talking about, that had compassion. 
because I went through all of that, it, it made me become my own advocate where I started to use the computer and I researched a lot of things. You make your own road, your own map, because you don't have a doctor sitting in front of you 24-7, 365. I also obtained my notes from my doctor, my file, and I went through all of the verbiage. I looked it up if I didn't understand the terminology. But basically, my DO, the hands-on, was the best thing that ever happened to me, so I really didn't need to go elsewhere. He straightens you out, and he explains to me that your body has memory, and because my body has been in this state for so long until I did something about it, we have to readjust it, and we have to bring it back to a state of normalcy. Asking people for help all the time, it's just, it was overwhelming for me. It crushed me. And you start to feel a lot of guilt, um, thinking that they really don't think that you're hurting as much as you are, but you really are and you don't want to complain all the time. The emotional part of you is a huge issue with this disease. I feel it. I know it. You don't really feel balanced and you do get depressed. So as long as you understand that that's happening to you, you can work properly with it. It's the strong mind and I think the body's just taking the punches now. I think as a chronic pain person, we kind of educate ourselves about the medical field. I try to take, stay positive about it, but there's, there's so much negativity, so many things falling in the cracks. And if we don't stay proactive and right on top of it, you know, it'll take longer to get the right care. It's hard to explain it to some people that don't have chronic pain. It's almost like the chronic pain person feels guilty if we're, if we're good that day because we feel like the doctor's not going to see the real us, the real me, in pain. I was just so thankful to get a name and to have a doctor who understood that yes, I was in pain, no, I was not faking. I don't want attention, I just am in pain. That's what mattered when I first got the diagnosis. I had a doctor and he said there are treatments and I have a doctor that believes me. By that time the pain had gotten so bad that I was thinking I had um, bone cancer. That's the only thing I could think of and I was praying that the only, the only, my only hope was that I could live to see my son graduate from high school. And I continued to talk to my doctor, but I didn't have the words. And I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm a communications person. And I couldn't communicate to him how bad that pain was. And I can remember him telling me later, as soon as I walked in the door, he knew I had RA. And I can remember riding home and crying along the way. Finally, someone had di maybe diagnosed what I had. He treated me as an equal. I knew my body better than anyone else, better than he did. He was an expert in rheumatology, in the drugs that would help me, in my body symptoms, but I knew my body and he acknowledged that and encouraged me to act as his partner. And he is my hero, my savior. I love him to death. I reach out to other resources besides people and social workers and, and doctors uh, that say chronic pain is something they don't want to talk about or they don't deal with. I work with uh, horses. I feel the horse and that horse feels me when I'm working with that horse and uh, I've found nothing like it in my life. When I'm done about three hours with the horses, I'm good to go for the rest of the day. My, my family is the best, and I, I'm very, very fortunate to have the husband I have, and the children I have, uh, and the grandchildren I have. It, it was very hard on all of them, and it was especially hard on Mike. And that's all I've had over here is love. I mean, all my extended family and my friends, and, under the, my spinal cord injury is a person and a person that wants to express herself, you know, and, and be uh, a meaningful member of the community. Chronic pain patients need support from their surroundings. 
Healthcare professionals that listen and accommodate are likely to come up with creative solutions. By being engaged in their own recovery, patients can maintain the optimistic outlook that is necessary for effective treatment. Communication, understanding, and provider empathy can have enormous positive impacts on the people who suffer from chronic pain. The truth is we may never be pain free. We don't want to lose hope, but we need to live our life. This is our life. Every day that goes by is another day of our life that we have used up. And we can still live a very worthwhile, rewarding life, uh, even if we do have pain. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is an option. And I say that um, you can still have, have a fulfilled life with chronic pain. You just got to be more creative and adjust your life to your condition.